Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Sayyidi, someone is asking about. Uh, yeah, Sayyidi, uh, we thought angels never change. Then how to understand how angel became and changed to Iblis? Was Iblis was his character always and was exposed? Uh, Iblis was a jinn and his worshipness was so strong and that was always the example that tariqah comes and teaches that some people they have a lot of him in which they do whatever they want to do and they do it and they do it and they do it. They say for 70,000 years he worshipped Allah in which he made a sujood everywhere. There's nowhere from earth into the heavens that he did not make his sujood and his worshipness for Allah but because his worshipness was based at his own time and his own pace and the way he wanted, he didn't know that his actions were filled with arrogance. And Allah, Allah allowed him to continue until he reached the station of heavens in which the angels would come to his associations of teachings. And when he would give a bayan they were listening. And that's where only Allah come to teach us. It's not only the bayan that come to you say, oh it's very interesting talk he had. But the guy's yelling and screaming and every other word he's spitting from his mouth. He's exhibiting characteristics that are not with the love and the muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad The one talking must always assume that Sayyidina Muhammad is straight in front of you, looking at you while you're giving bayan. You cannot yell, you cannot scream, you cannot become insulting, you cannot do anything that would make the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad to leave that bayan. And that's what they call their madad and their support because all their shaykhs come with a Muhammadan light. So when the shaykh is coming, he's coming with a Muhammadan light as if Prophet is in front of them in a Muhammadan dress. So it means that then shaitan was exhibiting characteristics and the angels were being dressed by. And that's why Allah wanted to show when He said the Khalifa, bow down to show their taslim and this was a sujoodul ihtiram and the angels went into sujood except shaitan, he didn't. Then the angels they came back up to look and they said, oh, they're scared that he's not making sujood to Allah and they went down again that's why we make the two sujood. They made one, came up and they saw he's still not bowing, they were scared and went back into sujood. And when they got up and finished then the ones whom had been his students, they took it to ask a question. So why the Khalifa? And that's what Allah wanted to bring in as an example. Those angels that Allah allowed them to even speak so that to be as an example. Harut and Marut were two other angels, so there are stories of angels falling. When Allah wants to test them for whatever reason Allah does whatever Allah wants to do. They don't say, no it can't be done. When the two angels Harut, when Allah was describing later in creation that, look how difficult their life is on this earth, how much they have challenges from shaitan coming after them, there were angels thinking, that's not so hard, why don't they just stay pure like us? And then Allah told Harut and Marut, if you think that's easy then we'll make you to go down and I'll give you Ismullah al-Azam in which you go and you become human at that time, live amongst them. But if you should commit a sin immediately you will stay in that realm and you'll no longer be allowed to repeat that name to come into the heavens. They thought they were on a very easy mission, we're going to go there and it's going to be great and we're going to show how you should be as an angel in this realm. The minute they came in they went to a 
meikhane where they were drinking in a tavern. And they said, wow this is like these humans have it great and they started to drink. And as soon as they're drinking they saw a very beautiful woman and they said, wow these, these human women are something else because now they're in a human form. They use that name to come in human form. So they went and approached the beautiful woman. She was very, some come, come. So they went and approached, said, do you want to be with me and I said, okay. I said, but I have you to do one thing for me. I said, what? I said, kill my husband. I said, hmm? Kill my husband. I said, okay. <laughs> they went and they, they killed the husband and they're cut. And then they cried and repented, we don't know what happened to us, Ya Rabbi we came, we drank from their drinks that we don't have in heaven and we lost our mind, <laughs> we went after a woman, we never seen a woman before. We wanted her, we said, we do whatever you want and he asked us, kill this man and we killed him and now we don't know how to go back. So go back, for all of eternity you're on this earth. This Harut and Marut were thrown into the well of Babel and they're held upside down inside that well still to today where all the magicians they make their ziyarat to that well and they ask from those angels the magic of deceit. So the, the knowledges of this magic are real because it's coming from these angels. And they give a warning that before we tell you this know that you will be eternally punished. Because Allah describes in Qur'an they give a disclaimer that we are angels of the heavens and that Allah will punish you and they will take that knowledges regardless of the threat of punishment. And the majority of the angelic knowledges they take is how to break families. So the satanic empire is very big on how to break relationships and break families. Sayyidi, many people ask me this question and I'm also curious. Um, many are, are is many that what you're saying? Many, many or that person that is saying person many is saying, people? Many people, many people ask them this question. Okay. So they're asking on behalf of them and themselves. And the many. Yeah. The few that represent many. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Saying, are is that Yahya on the other side <laughs> doing that? <laughs> Cause anytime Yahya is here he says, many people have been asking, for what? For Fruit Loops. I said, many as in you? <laughs> Uh, they're asking, are big sins also forgiven with durood sharif Inshallah all sins given, what's, what's big and what's small? When, when, when you, there's a, there's a physics and science apps now that you can look and say, look into the universe. You take this leaf and then begin to zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, it goes outside of the earth goes outside the galaxy, goes out to the Milky Way, goes out into space. You can no longer even see the dot of the earth. Allah how many billions of galaxies and universes Allah has? Aren't you astonished that He even knows who you are? <laughs> right? This is Allahu Akbar, Ya Rabbi the vastest of your thing, are you sure you know who I am? Did anybody forget me up there? Says, not a single breath you make, I forgot. Not a single step you make, I have not written for you. So Allah just says, everything is in a hisab. But with that vastness and greatness, Allah want to rip you to pieces for what? Why Allah created you? He want you to make your istighfar, want you to understand that you are of a sinning nature. Your nation sins and never tires from sinning and I'm not tired of forgiving them. And this way is a way of muhabbat and rahmah and this what makes the greatness of Allah Otherwise what would make Allah great? When the angels were astonished that, how come they do so many bad things and you forgive them? And that's when you say, SubhanAllah is kareem, Allah is generous because the servants are sinning. If all the servants were good how would you know the greatness of Allah but it's because we're bad, because we're doing wrong things and because Allah forgiving us and raising us, the game is stacked in our favour. 
Allah manipulated the game for you to win. Why? Your hasanat is ten and your siyat is one. So every time you go out and <laughs> sin, right tomorrow you go out and sin, it's one. Come in the next day say, Tawbah Ya Rabbi. <laughs> you got ten. Oh, so I'm now nine ahead. SubhanAllah. <laughs> As long as you're keeping good count because you don't want to go ten times bad and then you only got one. <laughs> no doubt. So alhamdulillah Allah stacked the game in our favour and that that which we can't clean that's why we talked last night on istighfar, making astaghfirullah al-azeem. When Allah put these words together for us it's basafat al-azeem. Ya Rabbi, your might and your magnificence, I'm asking istighfar from that power Ya Rabbi, which all universes are in your command, I'm so small, blow away my sin. Allah said, yes, alhamdulillah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Every time we make istighfar, the zikr of Allah back upon us is Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. In my name of compassion and mercy is forgiven. So busy yourself all day long asking istighfar so that Allah make zikr of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem upon your soul in which you be dressed from every knowledge of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem is the bab and the door of all uloom and all knowledges. So that istighfar actually is opening the secrets of knowledges until every cell in you has made a sincere istighfar because every cell is its own universe in you. Every cell in you, you've made so much istighfar, every cell in you has made an istighfar in which we call a zero point energy where you have reduced your energy so much onto the horizon of death in which Allah is going to raise you into these oceans of baqa. It has its own complete reality. And we said before, you want to be washed before you make salawats. You know, you don't go as a dirty person running into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad although we're all dirty, but at least take a shower. When people don't understand that then you think, oh my God, how are they coming to this zikr? You know, in time of Mawlana Shah Naqshaband, three times a week they would do muraqabah. And all his majlises they have a hammam outside, sh shower outside and you put your white clothes there. From wherever you come before you can enter in his presence you had to shower. You showered, you put your clothes and then you came into the presence of that shaykh so that every reflection of energy would be dressed upon you. He wouldn't be spending the whole time just trying to clean himself from all of the sayat of people flying towards them. If that is an adab for Mawlana Shah Naqshband, imagine the adab for Sayyidina Muhammad But people are heedless now, when we talk of adab they make salawats it's real. As soon as they're making salawats their soul is entering into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad They feel ashamed and shy that, that that dirtiness is with them. So all day long they're making istighfar, astaghfirullah al-azeem, astaghfirullah al-azeem until they feel that dirtiness to be lifted from them, their children, their family and their communities. And then they're coming now, Ya Rabbi has led me to be sweetened by that presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So many people commenting, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. Ya Alhamdulillah, don't despair in the mercy of Allah <laughs> immense. There's not a, there's not a ni'mat that you cannot find. When we did in Ramadan so many people worried about their salah, oh I came into Islam at 40, I came into Islam at 30. Imagine that when you came Allah wiped away all your sins and then we had that salah that counted for a thousand years of salah. The game is so much in our favour it's ridiculously amazing. Yeah, why people then have to make it hard? So Shaykh Nazim would say, what? make the doors of paradise as wide as possible. And why? Why the wisdom of that? And they say that a man had a dream 
and he was doing good and saying good and doing lots of da'wah. He had a dream of his resurrection that he dreamed he had died and that he was being brought in Allah's Divinely Presence. And Allah was judging him and began to say everything that he was doing wrong and judgment. And then the servant was starting to cry and cry because he was a good person and he had done good all his life. And then Allah says, why are you crying? He said, I expected more, I expected something different. And immediately Allah changed the whole scenario that you see me as how you envisioned me. Allah wanted to, to see something in his heart and he was firm in that, I tried my best Ya Rabbi, all this judgment that you're passing upon me, I told everybody about your rahmah, about your love. How Allah wants to punish the servant who talked about love. So you talk from love and muhabbat to save your own soul, Ya Rabbi I don't know what I've done wrong. But I told people about your rahmah, don't grab me to throw me into fire. That Allah be pleased upon how you presented Allah to His creation. And Allah judge not for you shall be judged. All Prophets came and warned that how you're judging, Allah will judge you. So give people the best of news that Allah's rahmah will dress and bless all of you because I'm counting it on, on it the most, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.